Nuclear power is a high-risk technology that has always had well-known and well-feared safety risks that have recently been complemented by the risk of terrorism. Uh, there's a now a security threat in addition to the well-established safety threat. The safety threats of nuclear power are the tremendous amounts of radioactive materials that are in a confined space that could be released if an accident occurred. If you look at the risk of nuclear power plants over time, the risk is highest early in life, the infant mortality phase, and at the end of life, the wear out phase. If you extend the life of the existing nuclear power plants, you run them longer in the wear out phase. Or if you build new nuclear power plants, you plop them down in the high risk infant mortality phase. To date, we've had accidents at Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, Fermi, SL1, and Browns Ferry that have all occurred in the first year or two of the plant's operation in the infant mortality phase when the risk is high. The plants that we have operating today are running into the wear out phase where the risk again goes high. That high risk is evidenced by the recent problem discovered at the Davis Bessie plant in Ohio, which came within a quarter of an inch of a very serious accident. The leak of cooling water from the reactor core caused the reactor vessel head that contains that reactor core to, to be eroded. eroded. The six inch thick carbon steel reactor vessel was eroded completely away. The only thing left was a quarter inch thick stainless steel inner liner that was mainly provided to protect the carbon steel, not to retain all that pressure. That stainless steel fortunately held against that pressure. Had it broken, the cooling water inside the reactor would have poured out through the hole that was in the reactor vessel head at a time when a significant backup safety system, the containment sump, was also broken at the plant. The accident at Davis Bessie could have progressed to the point of a China syndrome, where the reactor core overheats, melts, and starts burning its way towards the ground. There would have been a very serious steam explosion, similar to what occurred at Chernobyl, to blow the building apart and release the radioactive cloud into the environment. The radioactive cloud could have affected the cities of Toledo, Detroit, and contaminated the Great Lakes and the surrounding countryside for a very long period of time. The Chernobyl accident in the Ukraine in 1986 contaminated areas around that plant out to 100 miles or more that are still uninhabitable today, nearly 20 years later. These areas are going to be uninhabitable for decades into the future due to the radioactive materials that were deposited on the countryside. The 103 nuclear power plants that are operating in the United States today are safety and security threat. Unless we properly manage that threat, people can get hurt. A lot of people can get hurt. The spent fuel at U.S. nuclear power plants is stored initially in large swimming pools. They're very vulnerable to aircraft crash or other terrorist action. If the water leaves the swimming pools, the spent fuel is still hot enough to overheat and either melt down or catch on fire and cause a radioactive cloud that could exceed that which Chernobyl exposed the world to. Because at the current time, we don't have any place to store the spent fuel from nuclear power plants. U.S. nuclear power plants were built with the concept of an aircraft strike in mind, but it was an accidental crash. We didn't envision the 9-11 type suicide attack, and none of the plants in the United States were built to withstand that type of attack. Since 9-11, all we've done to protect our nuclear power plants from that kind of attack is to upgrade airport security. That's it. Nuclear power plants containing thousands of curies of radioactive materials located close to large population centers are particularly vulnerable parts of the infrastructure that our enemies may try to exploit against us. Dismantling a nuclear power plant creates some very difficult challenges. Many of the parts are very large, can weigh 100 tons or more, and are radioactively contaminated. You have to dispose of highly radioactive materials in special disposal sites. It will take tens of thousands of shipments to clean up this problem we've created. The transport of highly radioactive materials by rail or by barge has been described by some as mobile Chernobyl. You have radioactive material in motion and a terrorist can figure out where and when they want to strike. The nuclear power plant itself operates for 30 to 50 years, then creates waste materials that are hazardous for tens of thousands of years. It's hard to predict what the government will be or what life will be like a thousand, ten thousand years in the future. It's also hard to have material that will kill them left to them because of our short need for energy.